Yo, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good, good, great, great to see you for the folks. Sorry, it was a little uh, late getting started. We had some technology issues. On the way in, you might have seen a poll. So please vote on the poll. As you know, we switched to a different format yesterday, which just allows you to see the panelists. That's the webinar uh, feature versus the old one we were using before this, which was the meeting room where you see 20 people on your screen at, at any time. So we love your feedback on which format you like. Uh, I'm getting the, the word from people that like the old format better because they like seeing, you know, 25 people at a time. I see some posts on my dancing. In this format, it's no fun dancing alone. So uh, if we go back to the other format where there's 20 of us dancing on the screen, we can get back to dancing. So, so Mike, what we've been doing on these calls, we come on about five, 10 minutes early, just music, and we dance and we get our energy up. And then uh, at the end, we do some laughing with some type of a funny video. I think today is a Saturday Night Live skit. So feel love free it. to stay for the video at the end if you want. I love it. So great to have you here, Mike. I mean, you've been in the company for a long time. You're the number one profit share earner. You've been on the Texas Board of Realtors, the National Association of Board of Realtors. You're OP of many businesses, regions. Um, so happy you could spend some time with us today talking about wealth building. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. My honor. I love to start with the first questions we start with is, is, you know, what are you seeing going on in this market? And, you know, again, you've been in the business for a number of years and you've seen a lot of other shifts. So what do you see going on now and how does that differ to some other things we've seen over the years? Okay. Uh, well, uh, first again, thank you for having me and, uh, hello everybody. <laughs> I, uh, um, so this is my sixth shift. I started right out. I was a newlywed right out of college, not knowing where, and I walked into a real estate office one day and, 20 minutes later, I said, I'll, I'm, I'll try this and it's stuck. So, uh, and actually I started in the shift. This was in like 73, 74. Wow. And so I didn't know any different. It's uh, back then uh, for the, you can go, most of you can go to the history books, but we were having three and four hour um, lines at the gas pumps. It was an oil issue. Was that an oil embargo? Oil, oil plays through several of these shifts, by the way. And oil is a factor right now underlying the pandemic. But uh, anyway, so, so I started with that. And uh, went through that. And then the late 70s, we had another oil crisis and an impending war with Iran. Right. Uh, and that's what led us into 18% interest rates. You may have heard some of those stories. That was right when <laughs> Gary got into the business during that shift, right? Yeah, that's about when Gary's about six years younger than me, I think. And so um, he missed the first one. <laughs> we, we went through that. What was interesting about that one is uh, I'm in the North Texas, Dallas, Texas area, specifically in a nice suburb called Plano and a very dynamic area. And back in 1980-ish, when this was happening, uh, we had a, a usury law in the state of 10%. You could not charge over 10% for anything, or it's illegal. You could literally go to prison. And so uh, we were having sellers paying you know, 15, 18 discount points in addition to the other fees, so 20 to 25% off the sale just to get the sale done. So, so 20, 25% of the purchase price they were bringing to the table to close on the sale. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah. And, or net, net off their, their sale price. And, and then they would have to find their own money. That led to some issues and so forth. And ultimately, actually, the realtors drove legislation to get that change. Uh, then the late 80s, this was more specific to the Southwest, to Texas, Arizona, Colorado. It was a, a combination of commercial real estate. There were some uh, law changes which created a collapse there, along with the savings and loans crisis. There used to be things called savings and loans, mm -hmm. competitor to banks, and uh, again, uh, some oil issues. So that was a really bad one. I didn't think we could top that one. And uh, it was four or five years in length, and uh, uh, it, it was pretty rough. And, and so we, we came out of that again. And then in the late 90s, we had a combination of Y2K, which was just right. fear-based, uh, lacking what might happen. I'll never forget New Year's Eve, 1999. Everyone was waiting for the world to shut down, right? <laughs> Party like it's 1999, right? <laughs> and then uh, that uh, kind of tied into the dot-com uh, bust. And uh, there was a lot of crazy stuff going on there. And just as we were starting to feel good, then comes 9-11. Right. Uh, which just really shut down, shut us, really shut us down for a while. But the short term, uh, probably not as long as this one and uh, not as impactful as far as loss of lives and so forth as this one. Uh, we came out of that and things were roaring and they were so good and people were trying to, then we had the uh, really driven by the subprime crisis, bad loans and, and we just, uh, loan, loan to values were over 100%. 
And that led us into the beginning of 2007 or eight, uh, one that was worse than the one I thought couldn't be worse uh, in the late eighties. And we all know that went from like 06 or 07 to 11. And that's probably that's the worst one you've seen. I mean, that's one of the worst ones in the history. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now we've been on this seven year run. Everything's going great. Everybody's going, is, is this the best you've seen? I say, this is the best I've ever seen it. By the way, we're following the five worst years I ever saw from 07 to 11. And, um, and what's it, it, so as I look at this one, um, this is, these are unprecedented times, of course. And, um, you know, 60 days ago, we were clicking along in one of the strongest economies ever, ever. Right. Uh, now, one thing that's different in this one, I believe, and I'm, I'm going to talk a little later about, I was on the phone yesterday with a relatively small group with the NAR uh, chief economist, Lawrence Yoon. Oh, nice. Um, is uh, this economy ha has good underpinnings as far as a lot of strength in different sectors. So this is this pandemic is a fear-based and medically-based uh, uh, issue. It's not a, hasn't been an economic issue other than it shut down a lot of our economy. Uh, what happened in 07, 08, there, there were no there were bad underpinnings. The market was not stable, so uh, that that hurt that one. So. So we're learning together as we go through this uh, surprise we got on March 13th, I think it dropped on us that, that it was for real. Right. Um, and so mm -hmm. I think there will be a new normal. Mm -hmm. uh, it won't be what we're doing now, but it'll be different than what we went into this with. I, I don't know what that will be. We'll all create that together. Uh, we'll come out smarter, more innovative, uh, more creative and, uh, and stronger, I believe. Uh, we're just in the pain of it right now. And right. again, I'll speak to, uh, Dr. Yoon's uh, comments uh, a little bit later. So those were the ones I've been through. And the one thing that's in common with all of them is it's going to be okay. Yeah. We're okay. This is the greatest country in the world. We got the greatest people, the entrepreneurs, innovators, and uh, I especially uh, uh, pain and hurt and pray for your section of the country because Thank you're you. the hardest hit with, uh, with the COVID-19 issue. It's just a uh, horrible what, what I watch and read about on, on TV. So uh, prayers uh, for yeah, everything. Thank you. Yeah. Well, at one point, our two states were about half the cases in the entire country. <laughs> so it's uh, been yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. And so, um, and this will happen everywhere. You, you'll probably be delayed, but our governor just announced that we're going through phase one of opening up. There's right. a soft opening this Friday, May 1st. And two or three weeks later, they'll look at a little bit more and uh, they're doing it very carefully and hopefully safely. We'll see. Well, we're actually going to be watching Texas. I know uh, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, I think we're four that uh, are starting to open. So we're kind of watching that to see how that goes because we're probably 30 to 60 days uh, behind that at least. Yeah, so, I, I guess I, I don't know. I don't have that crystal ball, is, but uh, uh, we're not doing it like Georgia. They just kind of opened the door. So <laughs> We're being very, uh, anyway, very careful. And uh, say, did you want to talk about because we're talking a little bit about the economics now. Then we're going to talk about wealth building. You know, during a shift like this, do you want to talk about the, the Lawrence Yoon uh, information now, or do you want to save that for a little bit later? It doesn't matter. I'm doing it now. Let me turn yeah. over. Uh, well, once we get through the market and the shift, we'll get into wealth building. Yeah. No, this it's a great, it's great timing for it. Is um, and I'll just give you some brief statistics. Is uh, he said this started as a shock to our system and a lot of fear. He said. People are now coming out of a little bit carefully. He said, and as we go along, they'll get more and more comfortable. But here's his statistics. He's a, usually been very accurate. He's a highly esteemed, respected economist. And uh, this was a, he was fitting to a group of us yesterday afternoon. There's 75 people. It's called the top 75 large brokers. That NA, It's a forum for NAR to communicate to and be communicated from. And I happen to have the honor and uh, be on that committee for KWRI. Uh, Again, to clarify with everyone, he's talking about Lawrence June, the chief economist of the National Association of Realtors. Right. He's been in that role for a decade plus? Uh, years? Close, close to a decade. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, the bottom line is, he said, his, he, was, he said, he said, I will probably publish this. I'm still tweaking it a little bit. And so he kind of previewed to us what his forecast is going to be. And, and it will be a little different in every region. And uh, it's uh, in 2020. We will wind up for the year, for year in uh, 2020, down 13% in units. Okay. Now, it feels right now like it's going to be a lot worse than that. But uh, and I'll speak to that in just a second. He said, "Well, we were down about 11% in volume, uh, but prices will be up 3%." It, it, it's interesting. Supply and demand is different than. Yeah. Well, what's happening is we went into this with a short supply of housing, a shortage in housing. 
Now it's getting even more of a shortage. So people will pay a price to get what they need. And when, when um, I believe that, uh, and this is what I'm telling my associates is, uh, uh, get ready, be doing all the right things now. And we can talk about that a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. stay, don't just wait until it comes back. You should, there's a lot you can do. We're selling houses and so forth. But you're gonna you're gonna be standing in front of a water hydrant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For buyers and sellers, which most of it's gonna start in the third. It really hit hard in the fourth quarter. So what's interesting, second and third quarters are gonna be the reverse of what they usually are, the product seasonally. Right. And then fourth and probably leading in the first quarter of next year, we're going to have this big, this big surge. So it's kind of like the old, what we saw back before 2008, our buyers now are just buying later. Whereas back in the early 2000s, we borrowed buyers from the future because right. of some of those mortgages. We're actually just moving some of our buyers and sellers to a different point in the year. Exactly. Exactly. And then he went on to say in 2021, so let's just look ahead a year. He's, he's forecasting units will be up 15%. Wow. And prices will still be rising. So that's a pretty, I sent, I sent an email to Gary Keller that and Josh team this morning, summarizing what I just told you. And Gary's reply to when he said, said, thanks. Interesting. He said, seems optimistic. So, <laughs> Gary, so Gary's saying, let's prepare for the worst and hope it, hope it gets better. Yeah, so. And that's a lot of what we've talked about on the call, but, but hearing the chief economist of the NER say within the next, you know, roughly 18 months, we'll recover all of our uh, sales. Will yeah. allow us to kind of get through this a lot quicker. He said that the, the, the big improvement in the fourth quarter is what he's predicting is uh, we'll start the path to relief. It won't quite make up for what we're going through right now. Right. Second, uh, second quarter, basically, and maybe third uh, to a degree. So, so anyway, so the computers, What's interesting to me is, uh, is I look at some shifts in the market and um, how we can be smart about this is the computers didn't see the coronavirus coming. Mm, <laughs> they didn't right. predict this one, right? And if you look, think about over the past few years, there's been a lot of venture capital that has flooded into the market. You take competitors like uh, Open Door, OfferPad, Knock, uh, you know, uh, Open Door, which was founded in 2014. On the premise, you know, they, they've, raised, they've raised four billion in, in capital. Money's trying to go somewhere. So they say, "Hey, we're going to buy real estate." Um, you tank uh, Zillow, Mr. Barton, uh, who was his goal was to uh, um, purchase five thousand homes a month through their iBuyer program. And today, due to the, uh, the, the virus, uh, they're not buying them. any. Uh, Redfin, not buying any. All the others, the only operating iBuyer program right now. Is Keller right. Yep. Is because he went carefully and smartly, and he and by the way, it's it, it's easy to get sloppy when you're playing with other people's money. <laughs> true. Right. True. Which is what all the others were doing, and now it's like, oh my gosh, we we had to pedal to the metal so too too much. So, um, so anyway, it, you know, within a week or two, it, it just shut it shut that down, and a lot of us were wondering uh, in these iBuyer programs that what happens when they get into a recession. Yeah, you know, find these houses at discount that can change pretty quickly. Well, they they got one, so this this is a form of a recession, mm -hmm. uh, a short term recession, we think. So, um, and and they're laying off twenty to fifty percent of their employees in some of those companies, etc. Yeah, so forty three percent furloughs. You know, yeah. definitely saw those numbers. Right. So uh, so I, let me just kind of, if I may, uh, and I'll follow your lead, Mike, with any other questions, but yeah. give you a little. Uh, a little bit of a crystal ball, uh, although I'm please. careful with crystal balls because they become shattered glass sometimes. But and so, please do not take this as gospel, so to speak. No, this is no, from your from your years of experience. This is what you're thinking. Economist Dr. Brody here. Is, <laughs> some practical thinking. So, looking ahead, um, is I think one thing we might see a lot. There, a lot of the baby boomers have been downsizing. Mm -hmm. I think they might start upsizing or right sizing because uh, they're going to need more. Uh, they're probably gonna, not just the homeschooling, but maybe relatives that are going to be needing be there more frequently, if not permanently. Uh, office space. I think you're going to see products with two offices, home offices, where mm -hmm. both because really the extra, more extra. people working from home, that's going to be a change out of this. It's going to become a little bit more of a virtual world, uh, working from the house. I think we're going to see a uh, pickup, and this has already started, but it's a slight trend. But I think it will accelerate. Is some more uh, multi generational living, and by that mm -hmm. I mean post in law suites, post college, they still they still hang around. Elderly parents, instead of going certainly now with some of the news going into homes, uh, they'll be they'll say we need we're, we're going to take care of them. We're going to have them in our home, 
Um, so that's going to change. That's going to be right sizing. Uh, maybe. So with that, it'll just bring the demand back to the larger homes because right. you might have parents moving back in with kids or right. kids staying with families longer. Right. Exactly. Especially depending on what happens to the job market, they might all go under one roof to be able to uh, share in the bills. Right. Um, so um, I think hometown returns. By that I mean, some people have gone home to out, wait out this virus. And we'll see what goes. Well, that. we're actually seeing that in our area, being outside of Manhattan. There's been a lot of interest in Manhattan residents renting for six and eight months in New Jersey in the suburbs in order to get away from the, uh, the density of the big right. city. So I think there'll be demand for more offices or office space, uh, storage, uh, in, uh, garages, maybe two or three or more, mm -hmm. uh, in the, which would relate to all that. More porches and balconies, multiple bathrooms, a shift uh, from condos back to single family. And I know mm -hmm. certainly in the city in Manhattan and the boroughs, I think you've got a lot of vertical living and a lot of density there. Um, we'll, we'll see, I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, and then others, another change is going to be, there's going to be household changes. Mm. Sad, unfortunately, there's, uh, I think there will be, there will be divorces through this. Uh, yeah, lost spouses weren't used to spending this much time together, right? <laughs> right. And uh, uh, on the other side, there's going to be, I think, you know, if you have long distance love relationships and they've been away for all this time, they're going to say, let's just pick one city or the other. And let's, let's, I don't want to be away from you. Let's get together. Yeah. So there's going to be divorces. There'll be marriages. And, um, uh, so anyway, we'll be babies. Uh, There'll probably be lots of babies too. <laughs> yeah. And the, the Corona babies, right. The coronials or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> that uh, could be the name. <laughs> uh, rental surges, I think will rent. Uh, and I've told my associates that you might want to just get familiar with the rental market or, or get somebody on your team who's a specialist, both in single family and apartment or condo. Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a pickup on that. Uh, a lot of people will choose to sell their home if the values come down to I'm saying the prices are going off steady. We'll see. But mm -hmm. uh, on, on the other case, there may be some people who are not getting forbearance or help on their payments and are not able to make their payments. If they're not, you know, their $1,200 isn't going to be much to, to carry them for, for a long time, et cetera. Investor activity, um, I think will be, uh, I think there will be a, a, I think there will be a rise in foreclosures. And I think it, it's going to spur a lot of investor activity. Um, and I think some of that will come from, those who've been disappointed in the market, even though it's trying to surge back a little bit, um, may look to real estate instead of the market. The markets are just, right. as Gary Keller once said, it's the ultimate Vegas. I mean, it's, you just, you know, day to day. And, uh, what are you, time, what are you betting time. on this week? Whereas, you know, even in this horrible uh, real estate time with Corona, yeah. especially if prices rise a little bit, it's yeah. going to bring a lot of that money wanting to invest in a safer investment in the stock market. Exactly. I, I agree with you, Michael. So, so, uh, how do we handle this? I think preparation is the key. Mm -hmm. Last thing we want to do right now is just be sitting on our hands and saying, oh, you know, gosh, poor me. I feel sorry. Why this happened to me? Well, you know what? It's happened to 8 billion people. Yeah, it's happened in the world. None of us are alone in this, right? Yeah. This is worldwide, except for Antarctica. <laughs> They're safe. I haven't found it in Antarctica, so <laughs> I wouldn't recommend moving there. So, um, um, so I, it might be a chance to pick up some certifications. I think the NAR uh, and KW, my gosh, with the bold pivot, I'll let you talk about that later. Mm -hmm. I signed up. I'm taking bold pivot. I'm, awesome. I'm all in. So, uh, it's speaking people. of the bold pivot, while we're on that, we are moving our call format to one o'clock to avoid the two to four Eastern time for bold pivot. So yeah. we'll talk more about that at the end. Just want to put that out there. We'll, we will be moving this call format. Yeah. But just real quick, two or three designations that might be worth looking into right now. You, if you have a little extra time is one's called the uh, short sales and, uh, foreclosure, uh, um, resource or expert, I think. SFR is, is the designation. SRES, which is a senior real estate specialist. Uh, uh, and then there's one on broker price opinion resource. Uh, okay. -O -R. That I think pricing is going to be so critical to get it right because we're having a lot of uh, new data coming in. Yep. So I think we also need to be pivoting our marketing. Uh, and what a great time to call people and, and not say, you know, anybody wants to buy or sell, just saying, how are you doing? Just yep. think about you as a family. I mean, that's a, that's a call that will be appreciated. And, yeah. That caring call. Uh, yep. Yep. The caring call. So, uh, so just reach out to everyone and listen, don't talk, just ask them a couple questions and listen. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and, and this is another one. I think it's, uh, will be up to you is, um, or up to us is uh, fine. I think that the contractors, the home improvement and the repair people, the general contractors are going to be in high demand. 
So if you've got some good ones, build a relationship so that you, when they get multiple requests to do something, your, your people get preference. I, mm -hmm. I think that will give you a nice competitive edge. So, Especially if you get in that short sell foreclosure area as investment opportunity, you're going to need a good list of contractors to do some right. fixing up in there. Right. Exactly. So, um, anyway, um, so, so we're, kind of dove, we're kind of dovetailing a little bit into some of that wealth building aspect. So when you're looking at, you know, this market uh, and we often hear that term wealth is created in shifting markets. You know, what are some of the things you've seen? What are some of the ways you've seen people grow their, their wealth at times like this? And, and what do you see as the opportunity here? I think we're kind of on that same subject right now. Well, as it's related to, well, both real estate and stock is you look, you look, you can never pick the bottom. If you're waiting for the bottom, you're going to miss it. Right. Yeah. And, um, uh, I, based on Dr. Yoon and others, we, we don't know where the values of real estate going to go. It looks like there's more upside than downside. So mm. are they willing to invest? And there'll be some opportunity. There, there'll be, some, there'll be some opportunities. Uh, um, and you just gotta be picky. So I think, um, I think it's Warren Buffett said, uh, when other people get nervous, I get greedy. When mm -hmm. other people get greedy, I get nervous. And so you just gotta be at the opposite end of where, where maybe where the market's going. And so I think it's a good time to invest. I had actually stopped investing in single family properties about two years ago in my market. Cause I thought, I thought we were getting overheated mm -hmm. and it's, it's stayed there, but our market's still very good. But the one way I measure return on single family or condos uh, or apartments is if, um, is I want eight tenths of a percent per month of the, the value. So let's say it's for easy math, $300,000 property. I would want to be getting eight, per, eight tenths of a percent or 2,400 a month to get the return, which basically is going to get you 10% cash on cash. That's just cash on cash plus your appreciation over time uh, and your debt reduction if, if you have a more. So we say 2,400. Is that what you expect to be the, the monthly rental income, the gross rental income on it? Is, is that what you see being the monthly rental income on that property is yes, 2,400 yes. a month? Right. Now, but what's happened, this is why I stopped investing for now. I think it's going to change. I might jump back in. Is is uh, our prices went up so fast, rents did not keep up. So it's no longer eight tenths of a percent per month, it's five or 0. 0.5 or 0. 0.6. Okay. And so now that instead of 2,400 people are getting 1,600 or 1,800, that's not the, I think I can find better returns. So, so you just gotta be patient and uh, mm -hmm. uh, with that, so. As you're talking about these types of properties, there was a question in the chat, with so many people working remotely, do you think commercial office buildings will go down in value? So could, would that be maybe an area to avoid from an investment standpoint? Do you see that shifting that market? I think it's, I think it's an area to avoid until they go down enough. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, then it's going to be a time to be in. So yeah. Uh, what's interesting, we've had, uh, we have uh, 400 associates in, in my market center here. Uh, Dillingham and I are co-owners of this market center. Nice. How's and Dick doing? I, Is he helping I, everyone I, good with Dick? He's great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I would say about half of our staff is working. Uh, my, my MCA and assistant MCA, my team leader and our front desk are here every day as am I. Okay. And um, so it's, you know, we got pretty nice big space here and it's, so it's social distancing. It's not a problem. <laughs> but today, since the governor announced yesterday, I've seen five people I haven't seen in six weeks. They're wandering out a little bit. They're getting a little more comfortable. They got their masks, and, or some do. And uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna ease out of this safely. We always keep safety first, it, it, um, uh, I believe. So anyway. And just, and just so the folks on the call are aware, as OPs and market center owners and brokers, we're already starting that conversation. We're already starting to, to brainstorm, okay, when they open up, what does our transition back into the office look like? So be ready for some more information on that. Well, we, we've just gone through that. Literally a, an email went out today from uh, Christy, our, our team leader, after talking to me, since the governor's opening up partially uh, this Friday, we're gonna have our staff who's been working from home, they're gonna be back in next Monday. Gotcha. So we've announced that. And then agents uh, who have offices, rentals here, who we've, uh, given we, we've not been charging rent the last month or two um, is uh, on the next phase is scheduled to be May 18th. If they go ahead with that, they're watching this carefully, then we're going to allow them to be back in working here uh, under the safety guidelines, uh, whatever they may be at that time. So we're doing it carefully as well. And um, that builds confidence and excitement, but everybody uh, we've been doing uh, uh, actually now it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but for two or three weeks, we're doing daily calls with guests 
We might mm -hmm. have somebody like you or Brian Fair, or today we got Gene Rivers. Uh, I am. Last Friday we had Leslie Akers. I mean, we're getting some star play. I mean, and. Uh, uh, it's great seeing how everyone like yourself and these other guests you just mentioned are all so willing to give their time. You know, everyone's really coming together to support each other, educate, coach. So it's, it's, it's been great camaraderie. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a new way, but uh, it keeps people in, engaged and, and, it's, and it's comforting in a way. Uh, on the wealth building, you'd, you'd ask me, I think, or somebody said something about profit share is I'm, I'm getting fired up. I'm finding this is the time to, uh, we're in spring and normally people this time of year would say, well, I'm just too busy. I can't talk right now. I got so much going on. Well, you know what? They're not as busy. So I've, I've just created a list uh, last uh, week. So actually, actually, before we get into this list, I'm going to ask, I know you're a humble guy, but you might not want to share, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Some folks still think, even people on this call, still think of profit share as this, this, this thing just beyond their reach. How, I don't know if you want to share how much you earn. I know it's kind of public knowledge, how much you've earned lifetime. What's, what's the profit share look like for you and your family? Uh, well, it's uh, still strong. Uh, uh, last Seven year, figures. Uh, I was number one again. I'm, you know, I don't know why, but anyway, I am. <laughs> uh, I know. Historically, uh, you're well over seven figures in lifetime. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've, oh, yeah. It's probably eight million, seven million. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Last year was 706,000. The and that's down. It's gone down a little bit each of the two previous years. Uh, it'll be down this year uh, because yep. a lot of us are what profits we have. We're pushing forward for mm -hmm. a few months because of expenses. I'm, I'm all in on that. Yep. Uh, um, this month uh, or March, it's down about 75% uh, from what it was last March. Yeah. That's, yep. that's not because the profits weren't there. It's just broken. We're pushing, we're pushing the profits forward to be able to uh, cash flow during this crazy time, right? Yeah, so last week I, I was looking, you know, I said, all right, I'm going to get after it. So I started going through top producers who I had some relationship and so forth because my, my team leader is doing hers as well. And so I came up with, with my number of 26. Okay. 26, I see it. And I think I've got it here somewhere. I keep it with me all the time. And so I came up, it's, this is real fancy. It's real fancy. Is that 26 referrals you made, calls you made? What's the 26 represent? I made them all, but I'm working on it. <laughs> 26 targets. So... Just to give you, these are my visuals. It's down this side. There's 26 names. Okay. Real high tech. Real high tech. Do, yeah. do you use command for that? <laughs> uh, it works, right? Use the technology. It works. This works. And so I've called, I've reached, um, I'm looking at my notes here. I've reached six of these. This is since last Thursday. Um, two have joined. Wow. These are two have leaders. joined. In a week, you've called six. Two have said yes. They met and they joined. They were so open. I was like, are you sure? You really, you're, you're, you know, and uh, I had one go to another company, and the other, the other uh, three uh, are still thinking so far. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting started. Now I got 20 more to go, and so I'm, I'm encouraged by that. And so, it, it, you know, what was that, everybody's locked in and happy. Right? What does that phone call look like when you give them a call? Um, hey, Gina, this is Mike Brody over at Keller Williams. I just want to call and see how you're doing. Mm -hmm. And we've had a great long relationship. I've got great, great respect for what you've done in the market. How are things going? And so I just start, it's very, it's a different call than I might normally make. Yeah. And they'll say, well, you know, these are no times. I want to say, well, let's get, can we just get together and catch up? We don't, there's some pretty exciting things going on here, even though we're all in the same, we're all in the same storm, storm but we're not the same boat. And right. so I'd love just to catch up with you. And so let's have coffee. And uh, now where you do that is another issue, but they've been happy to come into the office because there's nobody around. They're not nobody worried about here. Yeah. anything like that. <laughs> And when and, and a lot of them don't realize when you can get and this is what we've done in 23 years here is um, this is our uh, let's see I don't know how you can see that yeah I, the, I got you you got the idea you yep get, we're the one on the left yeah yeah 4086 compared to 1501 you're, you're three yeah. times so number two. the next the next three in our market equal what we've got as far as market share mm. so that's a pretty easy sale I'm just I'm actually shocked more people just don't come begging right <laughs> um, uh, we'll we'll work through that Well, because with that graph it means there's more signs in the marketplace and more recognition yeah, yeah so yeah. it's easier yeah. right and uh so we've, we've got a great team and uh so the profit share is uh uh and by the way i i go through long periods where i don't do anything i just I'm, you know i want our alc to do it or somebody else get it, it, and i think i need to model and show example that i'm doing it as well Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will that will trickle to others. In, in your long career, what would you say is uh, the secret to building the the profit share that you built? You know, what are some of the things over time? Obviously, calling, but what are some of the the, the, the secrets to, to doing that? Uh, a lot of it's just 
being there, being being involved and, and uh, being visible, whether it's in your local association of realtors or certainly because uh, I stayed, I was still in sales for quite a few years after I joined Kate. I've been with Keller Williams since 94, so 26 mm -hmm. years. Um, and how many people were in the company back then? Uh, about a thousand. About <laughs> a thousand. Wow. And uh, uh, our first convention in 95 that I went to, we had 180 people. It was in San Antonio. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, but we, we had bought, uh, I bought in to Gary before I bought into the vision. Actually, that's Maxwell mentions that in his 21 irrefutable laws. He said, the law of buy-in is you buy into the leader, then you buy into buy the, the vision. vision. And so that becomes each of us. And every one of you, every one of you is a leader in your own mm -hmm. way, in your own right. And people will look to you. They will appreciate you. And whether it's people you've done when you make these calls, whether it's for the benefit of profit share or just long-term relations, uh, if you keep caring about them, they're eventually going to, the chances are good. They're going to come with you. They're going to be, want to be with you, want to be with you. And, uh, and, and I have to tell people, if you're a great co-broker, if you're, if you're great to do business with, that's the biggest secret I have. If you're great to do business with, people are going to want to be in business with you. Yeah. So yeah, one of my uh, favorite phrases, uh, and if I ever get to come teach with you, you'll see this. And I'll talk about it, is brighten a room when you enter, not when you leave. Nice. Let that nice. sink in. All right. And so we've all had co-brokes where we, if, that, if you get a chance to work with that person again, you're going to go, all right, this is great. She was awesome. She's technically clean. She's ethical. This is going to be great. And then you've had those, if they, they say they're bringing you an offer. You're like, oh boy, I know it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a zest for combat. I mean, here we go. And so be the person where they're, all right, here she comes or here he comes. I can't wait to work with them. Hmm. Uh, that's, 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 that's attractive. Yeah. That's attractive. Awesome. So, um, Going back, just any other any other thoughts? So you mentioned a little bit, we didn't get much into it today. What are some of your best people doing activity-wise? Obviously, the caring call. Do you see any other specific tactics out there they're doing in order to uh, take their unfair share? Yeah, they're, they're, they are uh, uh, getting really good with the phones, not, not, not just texting, and that they are calling people, just like we talked about. Uh, sphere of influence, agents they've worked with, uh, people they've observed in the market, even if they don't know them. Uh, mm. uh, hey, Cindy, this is my, I'm just, I just want to thank you for being a leader in our community. This would be somebody with another company. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Man, that's, that's, they don't get that call. And, and so that's, that's being different. So they're doing that. But we've done some really cool stuff with, you know, virtual open houses, our tours. We've been doing open houses very carefully. Our, our standards here are uh, only two people in, and they've got to be people that would be on the contract. So if a family of four comes, uh, only one of the couple uh, will be allowed in while the other one stays out with the kids. And, the other, and then we're using gloves and masks. Uh, we're sanitizing after every showing. We're telling them they can't touch anything. And we saw, we've got all the scripts. It's all done in a, in a nice way. And we're having great success. They're getting, they're getting attendance. Uh, virtual open houses where they say, this one's going to be, your, uh, you'll be able to see it, your turret you know, this Saturday from one to one thirty, and you might get uh, 30 people during that time. But then you get, you see that it was, it was, it was touched by 1100 people. They looked at it yeah. without making any comment or registering or anything like that. But you get a lot more eyes on that virtual you got, open house. You got, now you got their emails. <laughs> because yeah. they, they had to get in. So a lot of, a lot of innovation. Um, awesome. uh, same the buyers, uh, you know, we're, you know, gosh, we're getting people that are doing five transactions a week. That's a lot during this time, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I see a question in the chat box. I just want to reinforce an answer. The question in the chat box is, what kind of activity can a newbie take part in since there may be less clients available? And I've talked about this time and time again. I don't care whether you're new or experienced. You said it before, your database. Call everyone you know. You know, be visible. Well, yeah. So uh, when people say, well, I'm new and I don't have that database. Well, yes, you do. Uh, let's start with your holiday card list. Yep. Christmas card, holiday card. Yours or your parents or relatives. They, they, those are people who probably know a little bit about you, where you are, what you're doing. That's a great start. That's a database, right? It, so it doesn't have to be past sellers and buyers. That will build over time. Yep. And then connections you make, you should probably try and meet harder right now. But once you get going, we get a little bit, three to five people a day where you mm -hmm. at least get their information. Uh, the basics. What I would be doing is uh, on uh, KW Connect, not Command. KW, Connect. they're fantastic. Hmm. These are best of the best with best ideas. And I find myself I'll look. You know, they post who it's going to be. I mean, what the topic is, who the speakers are. Um, 
I think Gary and, and Jay and a couple others are doing it like at least once a week at three o'clock or something like that someday. So uh, that with bold pivot coming up, there, there's a, there's a lot to be involved with that is will produce business. And when we come out of this, here's here. All right. So here's, here's, a, a, this is a crystal ball and I'm acting okay. good about this. But you're going to have less, less competition when you come out of this. Definitely. You're going to have less competition. There are going to be people that can't endure this. They don't want to go through this. They're going to look for a real job. Um, they just, they won't handle it. Uh, other personal or financial reasons. There's going to be a lot of dropout. And mm -hmm. new, the new is not flooding in because most of the schools are closed or not open. Yeah. Maybe, maybe doing for, you know, virtual training, but uh, online training. But uh, so, so a lot of the competition is going to leave. A lot of the competition is doing nothing. So when they start back, they're starting behind. Yep. So this is a, this has been true in at least the last two previous recessions. Uh, is where when you come out of this, this is the greatest opportunity. This is the way to get wealthy or, or a high income to become wealthy uh, with that income um, is to uh, get your market share, all right? Mm -hmm. And you'd be ready and be, cause to get ahead of the pack. And so that's what you're preparing for right now. And that's what I'm telling people. I'm doing a call tomorrow where, where when the governor says it's time to get back to work, there's going to be an infusion of listings and buyers. We're already seeing the, the showing activity going up. And we're also seeing the, uh, the under contract starting to move along a little bit. So we're, probably at some point in the next three to five weeks, there's going to be uh, quite a bit of a flurry in the market. And yeah. the people that are playing the game right now is going to be able to take full advantage of that opportunity. So you are open as an essential business in New York or Tri-State? Uh, New York, no. New York, they can't leave their home. <laughs> they can't leave their home. They can't cold call. In New Jersey, you can still show, but it's one-on-one, -on -one, kind of like what you mentioned. Same thing in Connecticut. Okay. So uh, you know, New York will see a considerably bigger flow <laughs> when it opens up because there's a lot of people pent up demand to, to make a change that are still going to make, make a change. Okay. Gotcha. Well, 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 um, here's the last question, and I'll ask you for some final thoughts um, from Jeremy Goulish. Uh, Mike, understanding you have a large real estate portfolio, what is your best advice when it comes to building wealth by investing in real estate? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it. Be smart. And, you know, one thing, what, what, what fantastic edge we have in real estate, unlike maybe in securities or some other areas, is you, if you see a great deal, there's nothing that says you have to show it to anybody else before you, before you buy it. Right. If you see a deal, there's no, there's nothing in the code of ethics or your real estate commission rules that said you've got to show it to other people before you act on it. No. As so, long as you disclose your realtor, you can, you can act on it. Disclosure, a realtor, et cetera, et cetera, licensee, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, now, did you use uh, any specific it, strategies? It, I'm sorry. Did you use any specific strategies to find those, those, those opportunities or was it just marketing yourself and being the first listing, you know, okay. agent in? Uh, I just, I've got certain, I'm, picky about certain areas where, I, where it has to do with the uh, price point where I think there's going to be, a, there's a big rental pool. And also I look at schools, access to uh, roads, uh, key, key, you know, transportation issues. And so I'm, I'm, so I'm picky, which means I have to be patient. Mm. All right. So I'm not doing like, you know, uh, I get letters every, every, if not every day, several every week on, Hey, we want to buy your home. Are you interested in selling? You know, they, they know who the non, occupant owners are they get access to that so well well i heard you say before you got a formula it's got to be eight tenths of that of that purchase price right, right. um so so that slowed me down because prices outrun rents right now but right. right. i think that may change so 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 again if it, if it doesn't fit your formula then you don't move forward with that i'm assuming right yeah and which if that means you're building cash there's cash is king yeah. So when opportunity comes, you can be nimble and, and you can move quickly. So. And I've heard Gary saying it, which I think is so true. One dollar today is going to be worth five dollars about six months from now. Yeah. So cash will be very much king in, in, in this, this coming market. Uh, last question, and then I'll, I'll ask uh, your final thought. Someone asked uh, your, best, uh, your best recruiting script. Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. I, well, I've got, all right. So here's one I love is... Uh, and let's say it's for, I'm going to start, there's two, but let's say somebody's not in the business. If you see somebody in the service industry, right now, if you see somebody in first responders or, uh, you know, nurses or, or whatever, um, but anytime I see some, I used, I'm usually on planes a lot. And if, I, if I've got a great flight attendant, 
and I just see the way they, they treat other people. I, it, here's my script. I'll say to him or her, I'll say, by the way, you're doing a great job. Have you, how many people have others ever told you you ought to be in real estate? And they give me one. Well, no. I said, well, I think you would be amazing. Uh, cause I see, you know, your skills. If they say, well, actually others have, I said, well, I see the same thing. May I give you a card to answer some questions? Cause you, in the case of a flight attendant, they've got time. You know, they go in streaks. I'll go for three days, home for four, whatever. Um, and gotten recruits from that. Same thing in restaurants. Uh, somebody gives great service. They got that attitude. I'll tell you, it's really good. If you do drive through at Starbucks or what it, uh, Dunkin' Donuts on the East Coast, whatever it is. We use both. Pete's on the West Coast, whatever. Is, um, and so Starbucks is after only, at least in our area. Mm-hmm. And so I've been there a lot. <laughs> Those people who serve and take your order and give you, they are good i mean they've got they have must have some personality qualifying yeah. so that's it so that the one is uh, how many how many have you ever been told you ought to be in real estate or how many people have ever told you, you ought to be? that's it okay and at, at worst they take it as a compliment i mean you've just made them smile more right yeah uh and for existing agents i just tell them how respectful i said man i wish we could figure out a way to be a business together i just love doing business where i admire the way you work so i don't go in with uh hey you know a hard a hard close script, you know, or, you know, and I'm always respectful of my competition. Mm-hmm. I respect all my competition. I fear none. That's kind of my motto. And, awesome. um, uh, cause we still all have to work together at the end of the day. So those, those were two of the couple of the scripts. So I, I got to ask you one last question because it, it, it came in the question and answer box. And I know you guys are using Keller mortgage quite a bit in your market. The, the, the question was, have you seen having Keller mortgage in the agent's toolbox affect your business? Yes. Um, we, uh, they had to have some success to get the reputation and what a positive experience they've had. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's spreading. It's growing quickly in, in my market center here. And, um, uh, we've got a relationship. We've got two in-house lenders that we have affiliate relationships with. They're both amazing as well. Mm-hmm. And so it's a matter of choice. Yeah. And sometimes it's personality. Some people don't want to do the online and talk to the people in Ohio but then they've got some pretty good financial incentives that most others can't match. Uh, it just depends. So we, we support all that. Yep. So. And, and so two things I think about that. Number one, it hasn't affected your in-house lenders because it's a very different business model. The right. handholding of that, that usual lender versus Keller mortgage. And, and their personnel and their familiarity yep. They're, yep. They're in our meetings. Right. Yep. And I've also heard uh, that Keller mortgage is very popular with some first time home buyers because that rebate they get back at closing can really make the difference in, in getting the house that they want. So that's absolutely. Any final thoughts on wealth building or the market? I, I, I got to thank you for that, that economist, chief economist June information. That's something that we wouldn't get any results, but someone that was on the call with yeah. him yesterday. Yeah. Said, if you sure watch uh, NAR.realtor, okay. uh, he's got, he said it's going to come out this week. He was tweaking it. There may be some small changes. Okay. Sure, and he'll probably have breakdowns into regions, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, any final thoughts are a uh, couple is, uh, you know, tomorrow um, belongs to those who prepare today. That's my main message is be nice. prepared. Don't be sitting on your hands and waiting. Uh, be getting ready. It's coming and it's coming sooner than a lot of people originally thought. And um, still be smart, be safe. And a lot of it's attitude. I'm going to read a quick poem. I just uh, love this. I uh, actually have it framed, but I'll, I'll print it off. And it's by a guy named Charles. It's called Attitude by Charles Swindoll. It's a pretty famous poem. Yeah, Chuck Swindoll. Her statement. I, actually, not really a poem. And um, uh, I'm blessed because he's in this area. Uh, and I actually go to his church. He's, he's an amazing man, and, uh, uh, pastor. So, all right. So, let me. It's called Attitude by Charles Swindoll. Okay. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Attitude to me is more important than facts. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than successes, than what other people think, say, or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people will act in a certain way. We cannot change the inevitable. The only thing we can do is play our one string we have, and that is our attitude. I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes. That 
I, that, that so speaks today. And he wrote that probably I don't know, 20 or 30 years ago. So I would just say maybe in closing, um, um, be encouraging to each other, be positive, be that bright light, uh, uh, supportive. That's contagious too. <laughs> That's it's a positive virus, if you will. And uh, brighten people's day. So it's time for us all to rise up. And uh, like I said, be smart, be safe. Thank you. What an honor to even be, hey, to be on this call. God bless you all. And I hope to see you soon. I love Thank you, Mike. Well, before you'd love to come teach. So expect some phone calls from Emily I, very I was, quickly. I was in, I was in uh, Tribeca last year, maybe, or 18 months ago. And I, I, in 2005 or six, I was the interim regional director. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so New we'll, York. we'll have you out here soon. Look forward to it. Thanks for sharing this incredible knowledge. Uh, a couple of quick notes. Uh, and please, before you sign off, Put your aha in the uh, in the chat box so Mike can see what you got on today's call. So please put your aha in the chat box. Um, two things. Number one, uh, we're going to have the – this is going to stay as a 2 o'clock call through next Monday. So we've got um, – We've got uh, a bold coach tomorrow. We've got uh, David Voorhees from MAPS on Friday. We've got Diana Kokoska at 2 o'clock on Monday. Um, from Tuesday on, we're going to switch to 1 o'clock to not conflict with uh, Bold Pivot. And I strongly encourage you, if you haven't gotten signed up for Bold, uh, bold Pivot, get signed up with that ASAP. Um, and uh, any other notes you want to share with them? Uh, the, the results, we had you guys do a poll coming in, whether you like the webinar format or the large meeting room. And the votes were pretty close, 109 to 102. 109 people liked the large meeting room format where you could see more than just the panelists, and 102 liked the webinar. So we're going to go back to the uh, large meeting room format uh, as of Friday and uh, expect to use uh, marketcenterzoom.com to get to that one. So anything else? We might go back tomorrow too. Okay. Because tomorrow so, so we have Michael Flores as a guest. Yep. So, so, so look to the Facebook pages, look to the emails, and make sure you get the right uh, link for tomorrow. We're going to play a quick funny video because we like to end the day with a little bit of humor and have a laugh because uh, you got to hug, kiss, or laugh seven times a day to get weird, Mo says. So and this thanks, is our time to laugh. And thanks Mike. to Emily, too. Thanks to Emily, as well. <laughs> Mike, thanks for your time. You're awesome. We appreciate you. So long.